All right, this is just going to be a quick little update on the Motorola 6809 trunking controller project. So I know it's been like three years since I made videos on this. I finally got the motivation to get this back out and get it working further and do more experimentation with it. So I wanted to make a little update. It's not completely working yet, and this isn't gonna be an overview video or anything. Um, this is just gonna be a little showing of some progress on it. So here's the controller itself. You'll see I've got some more cards here. These are for the phone line interconnect and I got the other ACB1, so it is a full chassis now. And I've made some configuration changes to the controller itself, so it has a dis uh, different system ID now, and I've configured channel two as control channel, channel three as a voice channel. Channel one has an optocoupler issue on the receiver interface board, so I need to replace that, not the board itself, but I'm gonna replace one of the optocouplers in there and hopefully fix channel one, but in the meantime, it's just gonna be disabled. The Trunch Console Interface card, the TCI, which I didn't know what it was last time. This is a card that's used to interface with the Centricom console. I don't have one of those, unfortunately, nor do I have the CEB that would be necessary to interconnect with this controller, but um, it's not actually in use. However, it needs to stay in this chassis because the internal 4800 baud serial bus that runs from the RSC to the CSC, the transmit side coming out of the RSC goes through the TCI card first. So without the TCI card present, the RSC cannot communicate to the, TS, uh, the CSC. So these two are just gonna remain even though they're not in use. And it's a little annoying because it draws an extra like two and a half amps for my power supply. Which speaking of which is that same HP 6623A space heater, which is working quite nicely for this. So yeah, we're up and running. It's in a trunking state. And if I listen to the control channel here, that's working as it should be. So system ID is now 8112, and the connect tone is 105.88. So that's changed. I'm using this CDM1250 on the top here to transmit the control channel. This is one of the low power CDMs that can transmit at one watt. So at one watt, this can transmit all the time. It won't have any problems with overheating unlike the GM300s, so that's good. It makes it a lot easier to test when I don't have to worry about my transmit radio cooling down. So that just goes all the time. The GM300 right below it is being used for the receive side of the control channel. So that's one pair for channel two. Channel three, I have over on my messy desk over here, I've got a pair of the same radios, another CDM1250 low power and another GM300 alongside my audio interface prototyping monstrosity that's going on over here. So I have not completely finished a proper interface for connecting standard radios to this controller. However, the plan is once I finish a proper interface card and embed a PIC microcontroller into it to send CWID to make this a lot easier to use on ham frequencies, because currently I have to ID on my own every nine minutes on all four channels, which is annoying. But the idea is to make a little board that plugs straight into the DB15 here and then just has screw terminals to connect it to a regular radio that'll handle all the audio stuff and will handle IDing as well. So anyways, in terms of operational progress, this is very close to functional. There is one problem, and I believe it's a hardware problem, in this controller itself, which is going to take some time to troubleshoot. So let me just show you where I've got. So if I use my Apex 6000, the same one I was using last time to demonstrate, if we look, I need to charge my battery, and it's affiliated to the system. So. In the past, I could key this and it would try to get a voice channel. It would send the inbound status word repeatedly, but it wouldn't hear it either. It would not hear the outbound status word or it would not like part of the configure part of the parameters that were being sent back out to it. So I've made sure the configuration matches properly between these, this radio and this controller now. So now that it matches and it's configured properly and it's actually set for out of bound trunking now with VHF frequencies, this will actually get a voice channel and send a talk from it tone. So that's further than I ever got before. And it's cool hearing a real talk from it tone from one of these radios, um, at least from an Apex. So this does get a voice channel. It sends an inbound status word on the reverse side of the control channel. The controller sends a channel grant, so an outbound status word on the forward side of the control channel. It then keys channel three, which is the voice channel, and starts sending the low speed handshake signal. The Apex radio moves over to the voice channel's output frequency, decodes the low speed handshake signal, 
keys up and starts sending its audio. However, the controller is not hearing the subaudible connect tone that the Apex is sending. I verified the, the Apex is sending it. I verified it is 105.88, which is the correct connect tone for this controller. It's coming out of the GM300 on my desk over there properly, and it's going into the controller. The controller just cannot hear it. I tried connecting a function generator straight to the like discriminator input on the receiver interface board for channel three and just sending the connect tone at various amplitudes. It does not hear it no matter what. So there's some problem in this controller. It might be channel three specific. I can try moving this to another channel. However, that's gonna require a bunch of changes, which I would rather just fix channel two. So I'm gonna have to do some troubleshooting, but I can at least hear a talk permit tone and that's further than I got in the past. Now, sometimes if you heard it that bonk at the beginning, these radios don't like being super close to each other. So I'm gonna have to figure out some form of isolation for that, but Overall, it does work. I do have more VHF Type 2 capable radios now, so I can page 7002, which is an XTS sitting over there, and so I can send a call alert to that, and it will accept it. So that's pretty cool. Um, if we go into phone mode and just try to dial a number, it immediately denies it. So inbound and outbound control channel messages are working correctly. Those are the 3600 baud super high-speed messages. However, the low, the low speed handshake signal does come out properly, but this just does not hear my, um, it just does not hear the inbound connect tone. I might actually be able to show you the low speed handshake signal. Let's see if I remember the frequency correctly. That should be 147.8, I think. Let's see if I remember that right. Ooh, this is hard to do. I don't have enough hands. Let's see here. Yeah, okay. So let me turn down my Apex volume. I apologize for the horrific camera work here. I just don't have space to set any of this. So if we look at my scanner, it's gonna be sideways, but if I key this, you see it does get the low speed handshake signal and it gets the correct talk group number. So that is working. And these radios are indeed decoding it properly. Otherwise they'd be going back to the control channel and sending the inbound status word repeatedly. So it's very, very close. It's just that one last step, the connect tone, which is a subaudible tone that the transmit and subscriber sends on the voice channel inbound frequency so that the trunk and controller knows that it's still present on the channel. So even if this detects carrier on channel three, which it does when that receive light comes on, it does not assume that that's a valid radio present. So it has to receive the carrier and it has to receive and decode the connect tone for it to know that there is indeed a radio present there that is talking. So even if I key this continuously, you'll see I'm still holding this, it's still transmitting, but it just dropped channel three because it can't hear the connect tone, even though it's getting a carrier. But anyways, that's where we've got with this. It is further progress and it's very close to functional. I just need to figure out this connect tone decode problem and then we should have a fully operational type two trunking system. And then I can, once I have this in a working state, I will make a complete overview of video on it, demonstrating, just going over what all the cards are, going over how the entire system architecture works, and show you the terminal interface, and demonstrate private calls, and all the fun stuff between radios. Because I don't think Type 2 has really been demonstrated that much on YouTube. So, in any case, it's very close. I will make an overview video on it later, once I get it fully working, but... Hey, at least for further progress than three years ago. And that's about it.